When a person dies by suicide, it's felt by everyone in that person's life. Worldwide, suicide ranks among the three leading causes of death among younger people between 15 and 44 years old. And there is a national suicide and crisis lifeline. That number is 988, available in the U.S. But Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain why one new study might open the door to a wider availability of treatment options. The Suicide Crisis Lifeline is a remote phone contact. Now, in a medical setting, when someone seeks help for suicidal thoughts or comes to our attention after showing suicidal behavior, it's generally believed that in-person therapy and treatment is actually the most effective. But the pandemic gave researchers an opportunity to test a different option. Historically, people like the highest risk patients were always considered not a good candidate for telehealth. But according to Dr. Justin Baker, a clinical psychologist at Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center, everything changed during the pandemic. What we saw then is the people who were the highest risk during a global pandemic not able to get care. And that gave rise to an opportunity to study whether telehealth could be effective in treating suicidal patients who were at high risk in place of in-person treatment. So we found that uh, telehealth, brief cognitive behavioral therapy, um, was an effective treatment to deliver virtually. Um, it both reduced suicide ideations and improved on suicide attempts post-treatment. Brief cognitive behavioral therapy involves 12 weekly sessions that provide patients the tools to cope with their life stresses. Patients learn to do this for themselves, and particularly for high-risk suicidal patients, that's key, because unless you as the provider plan to be next to your patient 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you want them to be able to do these skills for themselves. Providing a new range of options to manage suicidal thoughts and behaviors. We could easily start to see access no longer be a concern for the full range of risk for patients with trials like this. We have a shortage of mental health providers in hard to reach like rural areas, right? And so this could certainly open up access. Now in the study, in addition to telehealth, cognitive behavioral therapy, reducing suicidal ideation and attempts, there were also no deaths in the treatment group. Dr. Baker says patients actually loved the telehealth option. It was easier from the standpoint of a time commitment since there was no travel involved, and there was often better patient confidentiality because patients could more easily work therapy into their daily lives. Back to you. We appreciate that, Dr. Frank McGeorge. And again, if you need to reach the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, just call 988. It is available 24 hours a day.